maybe attempt to simplify it. I mean, we are fortunate to live in a democracy. And Dr. Wallander, would you say that the United States military in general holds itself to the highest ethical standards, moral and ethical standards? Yes, Congressman. Would you say that our military takes great effort to avoid civilian, civilian casualties wherever possible? Yes, Congressman. Do you believe the United States intentionally targets civilians? I believe the, United, the U.S. military does not intentionally target civilians. And then in Israel, well, we have a vibrant democracy as well. This is a great thing. Um, do you believe that the Israeli Defense Forces hold themselves to a high moral and ethical standard just as the United States does? I do believe that the Israeli Defense Forces hold themselves to that high standard. And Israel does not target civilians and take steps to avoid civilian, civilian casualties wherever possible, correct? I, I believe that is a true statement, sir. And is there any evidence at present that they are, you emphasize in your testimony that they have a responsibility to protect civilians. I, I agree. I, I think they're doing, uh, to going to great lengths to do just that um, and to uphold international law. Is there any evidence that they're violating international law? I am not aware of any evidence that they are deliberately targeting civilians. And so contrast that, the, uh, the high moral and ethical standards of the United States military and our allies in Israel uh, with uh, Hamas. Uh, Hamas is a terrorist organization, correct? Yes, Congressman. And Hamas does not care about human life, including the civilians in Gaza, correct? Uh, worse, Hamas exploits others' concern for civilian life by placing their capabilities and their fighters uh, protected by human shields. That was going to be my next question. You anticipated the use of uh, human shields. And many civilians in Gaza have died from Hamas rockets landing inside Gaza and Hamas's attacks on civilians, correct? Uh, I believe there have been such uh, validated incidents, yes, Congressman. The thing I'm, I'm curious about is Hamas could, uh, if, if we apply the same standard, uh, they have a responsibility to protect human life. Uh, Hamas could surrender today, release all of the hostages, and the war presumably would be over, correct? If Hamas ended their uh, war against Israel, the conflict could be over today. Uh, a final question on this front. Do you want Hamas to be removed from control of Gaza, or would you like to see Hamas regain control of Gaza at the risk of another October 7th type massacre? The massacre. administration fully supports uh, Israel's goal of destroying Hamas's ability to conduct these operations. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, General, um, talk to me a little bit about uh, how, do you, how do you characterize the relationship between Iran, Russia, and China. I know the, the expanded uh, influence and presence of China in the CENTCOM AOR is a particular concern for you. Try, help, help me understand the connection between these, these three entities. Um, so if I could go, Congressman, to just China and Iran, what we are seeing, Iran is selling 90% of its oil, and that is the largest part of their GDP is oil, is, go, is being purchased by China. It's all sanctioned oil um, by the U.S., so Iran is dependent upon China. In effect, China is funding their subversive behavior throughout the region, their malign and subversive behavior. The relationship between Iran and Russia, um, that really started when they asked for them to provide the one-way attack UASs, specifically the Shahed-136. They started providing complete systems, and they built an actual factory in Russia. And those same Shahed-136s, a very capable system, are now going at a rate of over 100 a week mm. from Russia into, uh, into Ukraine. And then the, what I'll talk in a classified setting is the concerns of what Russia can provide back to Iran. And we're actually seeing interest of China interested in purchasing some of Iranian UAVs as well. So it's not interdependent, but it is a cooperation that is happening between all of them. What do you think China's goals are in the region, in the CENTCOM AOR? They want to be, they want to be able to replace the U.S. As, the, um, as one of the dominant forces in the Middle East. And you, you mentioned our strategic advantage being our close partnership with our allies, whereas in contrast to our, our adversaries, they have far more transactional relationship. How do you think the CCP views uh, Iran in the region? As a, as a client state, as a, a source of hydrocarbons that it can I think control? it's a source of hydrocarbons like they do many of the other countries. 50% of their energy comes from the Middle East. They import about 70% of their energy. I appreciate that. I yield back the remainder of my time.